Hello, hello, Fair Business Australians. Rebecca Lloyd here. I have a very, very special guest today. As we all know, our school has um, been a few shenanigans over the last two years, and we've spent more time at home than we have in the uh, school playground, which is not very good. Uh, we are now faced with not going back to school uh, for various reasons of which if you're a parent, your ears have already pricked up and you are very much paying attention. So who I have with me today for this very special conversation, and we are going to give you a free tool at the end that you can go in and download uh, for the benefit of you and your children. I have with, with, with me Michelle today. Michelle is a pro bono lawyer two days a week at Australian Law Firm. Uh, she has answered a numerous legal questions that I've had for her over the past couple of months. And she's also a very concerned parent with a couple of kids at school as well. So Michelle, welcome. Thank you for being on the call today. Thanks, Rebecca. Always lovely to join you. Yes, and we're we usually <laughs> talking on the phone and gas bagging about different stuff and how to save the planet. But today we're talking about kids. So why are you so concerned as a mum and why are you actually even bothering getting on a call to what is the entire Australian population? Because we do have quite a large viewership now. So my concerns as a mother of four boys uh, at school from grades going into grade four, six, eight and ten is that, um, you know, as every, every parent who's awake to these vaccination, vaccinations, uh, that um, it's terrifying to think that some schools have had pop-ups out the front and they're just sort of marching the kids to this vaccine and doctors have been outspoken saying, oh, it's, there's no um, moral issue uh, with that no moral issue with having your children um, vaccinated without parental consent. Now that absolutely is the stuff of nightmares for myself. Um, and I've, uh, whilst I have continually educated my children um, months, months prior to the vaccines even becoming available anywhere in the world, they knew the vaccine was coming and it was, you know, it was something that they didn't need. I woke up to these vaccines at Gardasil. I have boys and initially I'd heard about Gardasil as oh, this miracle treatment or a vaccine for, um, you know, young girl, teenage girls for P um, HPV. And suddenly my boys were getting these notices and I thought, um, you know, I thought that was for cervical cancer. Why, you know, anyway, so I did lots of research after a mum alerted me to it and my boys have not had that. And so then this is coming again. My children have never been flu vaxxed. They have had their other vaccines. And I've met lots of mums now who've never vaccinated their children. And, you know, I wish um, I had been a bit more educated prior, but thankfully my children have um, not had any issues. Anyway, enough about me. I'm concerned just like every other parent, deeply um, terrified that if my children at school, they could be marched into some tent out the front or, you know, near the lunchroom or whatever and, and, and jabbed without parental consent. It, it's absolutely terrifying. And I want to point out Anastasia Palaszczuk. So we're in Queensland, obviously. Um, anyone listening in other states may have similar announcements from their um, premiers. But yesterday, so today's the 20, what's today? The, it's the 31st today. 31st, oh my God, 31st of January. Um, Anastasia announced yesterday on Facebook that, you know, all these rapid antigen tests will be available for students and staff. They will be tested if they show any symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's no question here about whether parental consent is um, required or not. So I've also told my children they're not to get tested. Uh, I don't trust those tests anyway. And um, I mean, for accuracy, regardless of what I think's actually uh, in the tests themselves, if they're putting them up their nose or in their mouth. So um, she has this, yeah, back to school plan, which you can find on her Facebook. Mm. Masks also strongly encouraged for primary school students in year three and above and mandatory for grade seven and above. Again, we're going down this mask route. It's crazy. Our children, yeah. do, you know, my older son who's 15 did have COVID. I didn't have him tested, but he's was 
with his friend whose mother and son both tested positive the day before then he got unwell for three days and he was fine rarely any symptoms he didn't really eat much he was lethargic he was in bed but you know he was not at all you know un unwell so um Anyway. And I can tell I can tell from the way you're talking right now that there's a lot of stuff you're not saying because you're you're doing your very best to present a balanced, you know, but but off the record, you, you are in extremely, extremely concerned about where we're going with state powers over the bodily autonomy of children and parents don't actually get a look in at all. Absolutely. And I have conversations like this with parents all the time. They need a note to leave school early or for an appointment. They can't drive. They can't have sex before 16. Um, you know, all of these things, they can't vote. But somehow the government thinks it's okay for children to be told, oh, you need a vaccine, it's good for you. Come on out and we'll just give it to you. And your parent doesn't need to know. It's disgusting. I just... You know, and this is the whole system which I've, you know, obviously a lot of us have come to realise. It's the state control of, of per parental responsibility and, and bodily autonomy. It's just like, well, we think this is good, so you're going to do it. And it's, you know, and I've seen hundreds of parents say, I've just pulled my child out of school even before this school year has started mm. because they don't want to risk it. And, mm. you know, I've grappled with that myself. Am I going to risk this? Am I going to risk that my child maybe just say, oh, okay, well, what are we doing? And then next thing there's a needle in their arm. And other parents don't want to risk it. And I yeah. have sleepless nights about that. Am I being irresponsible by not pulling my children out and homeschooling the four of them? I mean, I'd have a big fight on my hands with them, but to do homeschooling obviously kids want to be in school and I'm not yeah. saying it's any better I think the parents who've made the decision to pull their kids out of school are amazing and um obviously very well organized and their children are on board um I missed the boat with trying to get my children on board and they're not on board but anyway mm -hmm. we'll struggle on so I'm with the parents who are terrified um I'm actually taking a big risk by sending them because if they're jabs, but anyway, this letter of liability that we have for schools yep. will be able to assist. I will absolutely be taking this with me on Monday. Yep. My two, two of my younger children go to the same school in New Farm. One goes to, and the older two go to different high schools. So I've, I'm preparing three and I'm letting them know that if they touch my child with a rapid antigen test or a needle, there will be all hell will break loose. Now, as a pro bono lawyer, can you break down for me what all hell will break loose actually means potentially? Well, because people are saying, don't do this, don't do that. But what happens if they just do? Like what, what, how protected are we by sending off a letter? Well, this letter says that they will be held personally mm. liable, not because they work at the school or, the, you know, the government they will be held personally liable. Hmm. And if you want to be held personally liable for something and be put on notice, um, you know, people can lodge caveats. If they have an interest and there's, there is a um, lawsuit that prov like is in, um, uh, filed, then people can, they can't sell assets. You can whack a caveat on their home. I mean, this is what we've been saying about police. If they want to be, if to be held personally responsible because they're going to be sued for damages. If my child is injured, actually not even injured, I, you know, it's just, it's putting poison in my child that I don't want in their body. And that is negligent. It's malfeasance. And the reason why these other governments that are just like Boris Johnson did not just suddenly decide one day, wake up, oh, I think I'm going to give everyone's freedoms back. He has been criminally charged. There's a criminal investigation going on in the UK. For, and yet, um, it's all well and good to have those things later on, but the, the, the damage is then done. And so what you're doing now with this letter, um, which will go into where it's come from and why it works, mm -hmm. um, what you're doing now is you are avoiding that terribly painful thing of hindsight 
that now my child is injured and I, and I wasn't able to protect them because I didn't have the right tools. So where did this letter actually come from and, um, and why is it so effective? This letter has come from, I'm in mean, a group of um, close-knit uh, medical professionals, so anaesthetists, neurosurgeons, GPs, very highly experienced and educated doctors. Mm. And one of them got this letter from the UK and it's been amended. And some, there's some other groups that have it as well. Yep. Um, uh, parents with questions have it. And I'm not sure if they put it up on their website, I haven't checked. Um, so it's been amended specifically for the Australian audience, hasn't yeah. it? So not specifically Queensland either. So it talks about, um, you know, their fiduciary duty of care. They are a duty of care to our children when they are at school, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, they have a duty to not to protect them or prevent them from harm. And this is why, all of the reasons why. Yeah. Um, to, and we as parents... Um, need to be have our fully informed consent to give our children a vaccination or to agree on their behalf yes. to allow them to be vaccinated yes and and that hasn't happened and so um for for the parents that want to provide this letter um and then it goes on to you know the controversial policy making of the government um and there's reference material in there links to you know doctors and scientists declarations yeah. Um, and even the WHO rec does not recommend children from five to 11 get this vac vaccination. So, you know, all of these um, bodies and doctors and scientists who are saying there's no reason to give these children in this age group the vaccination. I mean, this all started because uh, we will vaccinate the elderly to protect them because they are at risk. And then suddenly we're down to five-year-olds. Yeah. We all knew it was coming, but it's the slow and um, deliberate yeah. fooling and just corralling. It's like I listened to a great analogy the other day, but how do you trap wild pigs? You put up one gate and the food, then you put up the second one, more food, and they get used to it. You know, daily they come. The third gate goes in, they're all trapped. And suddenly the last gate comes in and they're in there and that's it. Mm. There's no escape. And yeah. so we've been lulled into this, come on, just getting corralled slowly. Yeah. And then, you know, if you're not awake, it's suddenly you're just like, oh, yeah. And then something terrible might happen, like all those people on um, Vax Injuries Australia on Instagram. I showed my son a story of a, a girl who, his age, 15, unable to go, hasn't been to school for six weeks, uh, six months, can barely walk, stand up. She had a job. She was learning to drive. She can't even learn to drive anymore. She has such terrible tremors. I mean, these are the things that can happen with these vaccines. Yeah. And they're all over the internet. And I feel bad for parents and especially her. She said, she says in her story, I wish I did my research. I mean, she was a 15 year old girl. She you know, when the government says on the news, oh, it's safe and effective, well, yeah, she got corralled. And now she, yeah. her life is hell. And hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people's stories. Anyway, that's, we all know that stuff, of course. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so it's effective because it makes the people personally liable. Yes, and, and it's putting them by, on notice of that liability. So how do, they, how do you acknowledge receipt of the letter? Is it enough just to give the letter to the people? Do you need a signatory? How does that work for people who are going to be downloading this letter? Well, it's like any notice. When you issue a notice, you don't have to get the other person to sign to say they've received it. It's, okay. it's handed in writing. I yep. would probably record the conversation. Yep. If you're having it with the teacher or principal, perhaps give, I would give maybe, I'm actually thinking about principal. The, my son's teacher and the lady at the desk because she manages if there's children who are unwell they go to the sick bay and all yeah. that kind of stuff yeah they need to be fully aware if anything happens to my child without my consent here's an eight page letter and I want you to really think about it and not I mean they're all aware of this there are 36,000 teachers not returning to school in Queensland 
And I said yeah. this to a lady the other day who was not awake and she said, oh, yes, because they're all sick with COVID. And I just said, no, no, that's not it. Is that what you think? And she, said, she was a teacher and I said, oh, I'm actually helping teachers who've been um, mandated and not returning to school. And she said, oh, yeah, because there's so many teachers sick with COVID. I just said, no, they don't want the jab. So they've been stood down, 36,000 teachers in Queensland out of 100,000. That's over 30%. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, all hell's going to break loose probably just on Monday anyway. Because What is wrong with our government? What is wrong with our government? And, you know, the education system is pretty broken anyway. And anyway. We're, going to, we're going to talk about some things going forward on a few Zooms and get some yes. experts yes, to talk to us because, you know, our level of education is apparently below Kazakhstan. Go figure. Wow. Um, so how can we fix it? I'm not a teacher. You know, I have four children who go to school, yes, but I'm not an expert. So we're, we're going to have some experts on to talk about that too. But yeah. um, I think in the meantime, this is a great, and I don't want to keep people and blab on too much, but this letter will be good for yeah. anyone who wants, and in, in any state, it's not referencing any state. Yeah. So if you want to pass that on. Yes. As a notice of liability. Will. I certainly will. And uh, for the folks watching, once you've downloaded this letter, I actually have uh, another fairly fairly significant conversation that I had last week with uh, someone that is has a career as a workplace health and safety, uh, has a degree, knows what they're talking about. There's a, a pack literally this thick. That obviously, I didn't read through it all because that's not my job. That's their job. Um, but they have prepared these legal packs that can actually be given to the school so the school itself is put on notice so if you're downloading these letters and you're talking to your friends um, those packs are going to be available for fundraising purposes and um, and to put the entire school on notice so that for the parents that aren't awake that don't realize the risk to their child mm -hmm. we don't want in in 5 10 20 years to say sorry told you so we want to be able to say thank god we stepped up even for the people that weren't aware yet because anybody that is aware will already be awake whether it be happily or jangly awake but we need to protect the kids even of the parents that aren't aware so we'll be going to roll rolling that out in the next week or so but for now you can jump on download that free pack um, get it out to the school Please share this video so that as many people can find out about it as possible and protect our kids because they are our future. They are our hope. And if we can't protect our children as parents and grown ups, my goodness, what kind of a nation are we? So thank you for being on the call today, Michelle. I look forward Thanks, to man. doing to sinking our teeth into some really significant stuff over the next few months. Folks, Sounds this great. relationship is well. In, in COVID land, a, a six-week relationship is like 10 years now. So we've been spending <laughs> time for about six weeks now and we have a lot, a lot of stuff to bring for you guys over the next few months. So stick around for this. But, Michelle, thank you for today. And Thanks, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you again soon. You too. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks.